Day two of the American Tournament from Orlando, Florida. It is the quarterfinal round. The first game in our doubleheader day session features the conference player of the year, the fabulous Gary Clark, the do-it-all player for top-seeded Cincinnati, which faces an SMU team coming off a win over UConn, hoping for further magic. You're watching ESPN's Champ Week, presented by Principal. And this is the Aaron's American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship. A rematch of last year's championship game in the quarterfinals. SMU the ninth seed and top-seeded Cincinnati. We look at the bracket where yesterday's first round saw the seeds hold except for that 8-9 game. SMU had a 21-point lead and hung on late to set up the rematch with Cincinnati. Kevin Brown and John Thompson the third, delighted to be back with you from Orlando. The task is Herculean for SMU. Take down a Cincinnati team that went 16-2 and behind the Conference Player of the Year, Mr. Do-It-All Gary Clark. As you said, Mr. Do-It-All, Gary Clark has been dominant. He has nine double-doubles this year, 27 for his career, won the Conference Most Valuable Player, won the Conference Defensive Player of the Year, and the Sportsmanship Award. Larry Clark, Clark is a handful. SMU, meanwhile, is coming off one of its best offensive performances of the year. Jamal McMurray with 19. He has really stepped up in the void left by Shake Milton's injury. Since Shake has been gone, McMurray has been instant offense. Detroit Piston fans, don't get mad at me, but he reminds me a lot of Vinny the Microwave Johnson. 19 points per game since Milton went down for McMurray. Akoya Gow and Kyle Washington for the tip. It is Cincinnati ball with Don Daly, Zelton Steed, and Rick Randall, our officials. Starting lineups brought to you by Aaron's. Cincinnati with four double-figure scores. Jacob Evans, a first-team all-conference player, along with Clark. Kyle Washington, an honorable mention all-conference player with a first miss. SMU starting five also brought to you by Aaron's. Akoya Gao, career high 21 yesterday, and took a hard fall on his ankle late, but he is okay. Says he feels good. Has the basketball on the first possession. A Gao going to work on Cumberland. And it's a Melagu. Hit four threes yesterday, and he gets SMU on the board already. Mr. Melagu getting them going. That's a good sign. He was hot yesterday, four for eight yesterday comes out and bangs his first shot. SMU starts off in that zone as they have been playing since Shake went down. One thing to note early here, a boy gal who went down late in the game yesterday is really hobbling. You can tell he's not 100% on that ankle. Kyle Washington in the lane. The red shirt senior in North Carolina State transfer. 11 points and seven rebounds for Washington in that conference clinching win at Wichita State on Sunday. SMU team that had lost eight of nine coming into yesterday's game. No Shake Milton, no Jeray Foster. McMurray misses a three. It's a shorthanded Mustangs team with only seven scholarship players. Clark fouled by Witt and he scores a two. Have to have better transition defense right there. The SMU group was back, but you got a no, no protective paint right there. A lot of that may be attributed to Gal's immobility so far. Gary Clark, the only unanimous player on the first team in the American Conference. Player of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year, and as you mentioned, the Sportsmanship Award. First player in the five-year history of the American to win three major awards. Double team comes on a gal with Washington helping out, and Akoy throws it right into the hands of Jacob Evans. And that's, you know, that's a scouting report turnover. And what I mean by that is, Cincinnati knows most of the time when a gal gets it down there, He's not trying to score. He's just trying to draw defenders towards him so he can kick it out to his shooters. That time, the perimeter defense stayed at home on the shooters. Long two at the other end for Justin Jennifer, the junior point guard, who will start. Kane Broom will play most of the point guard minutes off the bench. And a Melagu fouled to the dismay of Mick Cronin. Yesterday was named the Sporting News Coach of the Year. 
12th season as a head coach for the Cincinnati Bearcats. He's going with the Bob Huggins look today with the Cincinnati pullover, he said, in honor of Coach Huggins and all that he's done for his career. A miscommunication here, Witt and Chagua trying to connect on the inbound and another SMU turnover. This is a stifling Cincinnati defense. Second in the country in scoring D and adjusted defense and efficiency, but they are also the best offensive team of McCronin's dozen years. No, and you know, I think that they're the best at both that Nick's had in a long time. His team is always noted for their defense, and as you said, everyone talks about UVA's defense. Cincinnati's right there with them in every category. Here you see the scoring defense, you know, right number two. Um, but this year, Mick has offensive plays to be able to, to complement their defense with strong offensive performances. Best field goal percentage defense since 1961-62 right now for Cincinnati, whose opponents are shooting just 37%, although Amelago is at 100%, all five points for the Mustangs. Darren Cumberland back inside to Clark, fouled by Shagwa. And two free throws coming up for Gary Clark. Thank you, pardon Jimmy Witt picked up the foul, and that is a quick second against Jimmy Witt. Again, SMU with seven scholarship players cannot afford to have any foul trouble or injury. Clark, a much improved free throw shooter, has missed his first two today. No, if they, if they have too much foul trouble or injuries, and as, speaking of injuries, you see a gal, as you said, yes, yesterday he sprained his ankle. He's really hobbling trying to get up and down the court. You see him over there trying to keep that ankle warm. But SMU can ill afford to have anyone get in foul trouble or anyone get hurt. I mean, I'm sure Coach Jenkins told the court last night, you're not allowed to be hurt today. Looks well, like he might be heading to the locker room. Yeah, he's walking down the tunnel. So at the moment, SMU has five scholarship players in the game and one available scholarship player on the bench. Next man up would be the walk-on sophomore guard, James Pyle. Shagwa, the freshman, pumped on the ground. Jacob Evans had an early foul, and Evans has just picked up his second. This was what happened to Akoy Agao yesterday in the drive from Christian Vital. A hard fall with a couple of minutes to go, and he would not return to the game. It's a shame because yesterday Okoy had an outstanding game. 21 points, career high. He made the people back at Omaha Central proud. Meanwhile, Jamal McMurray has just been told to take off his long sleeved undershirt. Don Daly, the head official, just had McMurray take off the red long sleeve under his jersey top. Gal is back on the bench after that brief foray into the locker room. Jacob Evans out of the game with two quick fouls for Simpson. McMurray on the drive, and he can score from so many difficult angles. He can, and since, since he's taken on this new role since Milton's going out, he's just playing free. I mean, he's going to try everything. They want him to try to be uber-aggressive when he gets the ball, and he's completely embraced that notion. Trayvon Scott elevating and scoring over Shagwa, redshirt sophomore of Darien, Georgia. He and this Cincinnati bench have played well over the last couple of games. Five makes in a row for the Bearcats after missing their first shot attempt. Shagwa spinning into Keith Williams. And another foul on the floor. First foul against Williams. Three early ones against Cincinnati, which is hot for the field in the American quarterfinals. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Aaron's. Lease to own top brands in furniture, electronics, and appliances with no credit needed. And Stouffer's Fit Kitchen Bowls. This is Fit.
First game of four today, the Aaron's American Athletic Conference Championship. Two days, two selection Sunday, SMU and Cincinnati in the quarterfinals. Before we went to break, no, this is not Jamal McMurray auditioning for Baywatch. He apparently did not have a necessary waiver to clear that long sleeve undershirt. And so the officials did not notice at the start, though McMurray was playing with it. He didn't have the long sleeve on yesterday when he torched UConn for 19 points. He did wear it for the first three minutes and change. But the officials noticed, and Don Daly informed McMurray that he had to take off the long sleeve. So here is McMurray with the guns out. And so much of that, I mean, they're trying to keep everything nice and crisp and clean. And you, know, you need a medical waiver sometimes. I think that's what it is. You have to have your doctor say for medical reasons he has to wear that undershirt. I'm not sure. Well, McMurray is into the game and run the point for SMU. Mustangs three of four from the field so far. The Shagwas called for a treble, so they're three of four, but they have turned it over three times. This is Cincinnati defense that turns teams over at an average of more than 15 per game. And Shagwas got to get out of the funk that he's in. He was, was a little aggressive, a little too aggressive, I think, yesterday, and trying too much every time he touched the ball. And then so far today, it's, it's been pretty much the same script. Every time he gets it, he's trying something. See, a gal comes right back in. Shagwa just one for seven from the field yesterday. A gal with that 21-point effort back in the game. Inside, Scott from Cumberland and a foul. A gal trying to reach back into the play and called for the personal. Take a look at our Aaron's American Athletic Conference Championship bracket. Coming up after this one, an intriguing game between Tulsa and Memphis in the quarterfinals. That's on ESPN2 as well. Then we'll go to ESPNU for two really fascinating games tonight. Wichita State Temple. First two games were instant classics between those two. And then Houston and UCF, the hometown Knights, who are one of the top defensive teams in the country. But you could say the same about Houston. So we're excited for the rest of these games today in the quarterfinals, the fifth year of this American Athletic Conference. And, you, and when you look across this conference, I mean, you look at this SMU team, the UCF team, the Houston team, the Cincinnati team, I mean, the Wichita State team, they're very good defensive teams in this conference where come tournament time, they can hang their head on other things, just the ability to put the ball in the basket. McMurray with a tough long two. Microwave. Jamal McMurray, man, you're not kidding with that nickname. Microwave. He, took, he, he just had to take that, uh, that undershirt off. Cumberland. Offensive rebound grabbed by Nasir Brooks. Cincinnati Bearcats basketball down through the years. We can talk about how improved their offense is. We can talk about how traditionally their defense has been tough. But you throw it up, they go get it off the boards. Top 10 of the nation in rebound margin. They have the backup bigs in right now. As a gal's pass is corralled by Douglas. And McMurray's foot was just over the line. Missed a three and a gal is there for the slap back off the glass. But you see once again, when the ball went into a gal, Everyone in Cincinnati stayed at home. He's really not trying to score. He just wants to draw multiple defenders on him and then hit the open man. Draymond Scott with a miss. Brooks fighting for the ball. McMurray has it. McMurray on the drive. He scores the reverse. Persistence. <laughs> he wasn't giving that up. He was not going to lose. He was going to get an attempt that time. Kane Broom into the game for Cincinnati, the backup point guard. Cumberland's miss, rebounded by Scott, and a foul on the floor. Here you see, this is what a gal was so effective at yesterday, his activity, missed shots, follows it up, nice tipping by a gal. That's how he gets his points. Then McMurray, little dipsy doodle, kiss off the glass. How has a gal looked just health-wise to you since coming back in after that brief visit to the locker room. He's hurting. I mean, you can tell he's, he's his, 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 his ankles bothering him. But as we said, they don't have any other bodies. Right. 
He's dealt with knee issues this year and other injuries in his career. He's a fifth-year player who could be eligible for a sixth year because of all the injuries he suffered in his career. Gal facing up Brooks. Keith Williams, the freshman guards with Murray. Elijah Landrum now on the spin, well defended by Moore. It's a gal with four to shoot. Douglas a three right in front of the Cincinnati bench. McCoy a gal again. That activity is what he's bringing to the table yesterday and also so far today. Five early second chance points for the Mustangs. Brooks. Cincinnati will have that space in the high post in between that 2-3 SMU zone. They missed their last two shots from that spot. You know, in a different ways to play that zone. Clearly, USF, I mean, I'm sorry, SMU is saying, we're going to give you that middle shot. Can you make enough of those pseudo-contested shots right near the foul line area to beat us? And I guess their game plan is that they don't think their bigs can do that. Now, the question is, what happens if Cincinnati puts another body in there, like Clark now, who we know can make that shot? It's a great passer, too. That's the shot they're giving him. Offensive rebound is there. Trevor Moore, freshman out of Houston. Broom with a shot fake. And a foul underneath as Williams fought for the rebound. A little bit of a flop right there. You see, Koy Gow gets that rebound, kicks it out, points for his team. And that will be all for the 2,000 point scorer, Tyler Nelson, the senior for Fairfield. They recruit to love each other. You can see that's the way Sidney Johnson feels. Thrill of victory, the agony of defeat on full display this champ week. SMU in Cincinnati. One team will potentially have its season ended. Of course, the Cincinnati loss, the Bearcats are marching on. But SMU, the last two times it's been in this tournament, has had no agony. They were ineligible in 2015-16. So SMU has won consecutive tournaments back in 2015 under Larry Brown and last year in Tim Jankovic's first full season, one year after that postseason ban. Tim Jankovic is actually undefeated 4-0 after yesterday as an SMU coach in the American tournament. And, and Coach Jankovic's players are playing like they don't know they're down to seven guys. Jimmy went back to the game with two fouls. Evans still off the floor with two fouls for Cincinnati. Since he left, the Mustangs have outscored the Bearcats 11 to 5. Kyle Washington has returned. Room. Kick it back out to Jennifer. Both point guards on the floor right now for Cincy. Clark tied up. That's a jump ball possession arrow to SMU. Now let me tell you this. SMU's defense has been sufficient. They're giving up those shots. They're giving them the shots that they're missing. That spot right there has been open. Okay, a gal makes a great, not a great, a very good play right there. But what SMU has to do more, Cincinnati's getting too many offensive rebounds. They're getting the initial stop. And a lot of times it's difficult, it's more difficult to rebound out of a zone because you're not necessarily standing next to a body. But when the shot goes up, SMU has to go find someone and initiate the contact. Because Cincinnati, you can't keep giving them these second and third shots. Can't look to pass too quickly here with three to shoot. Nagal hoists it. Rebound to Gary Clark. Bearcats have missed seven shots in a row. There's a Douglas deflection, and the freshman has played an active first half. And we've talked so much about this seven-man rotation for SMU, but three of the seven are freshmen, Landrum, Shagwa, and Douglas. And in the case of Landrum and Douglas, they really have not shot well all season, but they have played major minutes with Milton Foster out. They have, going into the year, you know, I don't think Coach Jankovic and his staff anticipated those three freshmen playing the minutes that they have. Down the line, that will pay off and be beneficial. But 
you know, so far they've been put in positions that they didn't anticipate when they were being recruited, and the coaching staff didn't either. Well, the gal just turned it over. Sloppy for an SMU team that is without its best player. And Shake Milton, who was the preseason conference player of the year. Gary Clark wins the postseason award. But you figure if Milton had stayed healthy, he was in line to be a first-team all-conference player. 18 points per game, 4.7 rebounds, 4.5 assists. And the question is, will Shake Milton ever play again for the Mustangs? He's certainly on NBA scouts' radar. Kyle Washington, after a streak of 10 consecutive Cincinnati misses, muscles in a basket with a chance for one more. And once again, this basket is a result of an offensive rebound. Coach Jankovic is lighting into his guys. They have to put a body on someone. They're stopping the initial shot. I say that again. But Cincinnati's getting second and third shots. You talk about shake right there. You know, it's been so disappointing for him. You know, someone who had high aspirations individually. And, 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 and making second team is, is a big honor. But, but, but for him to go down and how it hurt the team and just as important as Jeray Foster, who was to the defense what Shake was to, to SMU's offense. Without him, their points per game have dropped by 11. Milton's 11th consecutive game missed with a right hand injury, and it was day to day, it was day to day, but the timeline has never gotten any shorter since Milton's been out. McMurray with three, and a foul on the floor. Justin Jennifer with his first. And some of these fouls on the floor are driving Mick Cronin a little bit crazy early on. Not that it takes much, Mick Cronin, who was always intense on the bench. He's just named the Sporting News Coach of the Year yesterday for taking this Cincinnati team to 27-4. and four. And, and if you read that piece, it wasn't entirely about what Mick Cronin's done this year. It was about what he's done in 12 years at Cincinnati, taking this program from really its depth with almost no scholarship players left on the roster when he took over to becoming a perennial top team in the American and a perennial NCAA tournament team. This will be their eighth consecutive year in the big dance. Kyle Washington gets the bounce and another chance for a three-point play and see so you put someone in that sweet spot that middle position who can score it's going to be dangerous Washington takes his time right there goes up with the left hand I think it was a, a, a gal who gets him with the body it sure was that's his second and after a gal had hit a three on the other end which was only his fourth of the year he will check out I know I was going to try to slide through through the rest of the game without commenting on the guy's uh, three-pointer right there. Well, what would you like to say? I'd like to say that hopefully SMU, for the SMU fans, will get the effort out of Shagwa that they got out of a, out of a right. guy. Justin Jennifer, the miss. It was yet another offensive rebound. Cincinnati has five of those in the game early, now six. But here is SMU hanging tough with the limited depth. McMurray. There we go. Energy by Shagwa. Clark on the ground. Amelagu is there. Do we have a timeout or a tie up? Either way, we have a stoppage with under eight to go in a tie game. The personification of rivalry. It's ridiculous how good this is. UNC and Duke. The saga continues. 9 Eastern tonight. If you're not in front of a TV with ESPN, you'd better be in front of a phone or a tablet with a watch ESPN. It's the third meeting between the Heels and the Devils this year. The winner of that game gets the winner of Virginia and Clemson, which is on ESPN2, all part of the New York Life ACC Tournament. That game never gets old, huh? That Duke Carolina never, game ever. never gets old. By the way, that last play before the break was a jump ball and possession arrow went to Cincinnati. Cincinnati has six offensive rebounds so far. 
Cincinnati has taken seven more shots than SMU. Eight for 21, but so many second chance opportunities. And there's another one. Mr. Clark. Boy, he and Washington, when they get going, are such a load down low. Cincinnati 16 and 2 for the second straight year in conference. Clark, the player of the year. Washington, an honorable mention on conference. And you know, it's easy for me to sit here and say, hey, keep Clark off the boards. That's something that he does. No one's been able to do it for four years. Leading rebounder in the conference, 8.2 per game. Amelagu, tough two. Washington, good position on Chagua. Kyle Washington with his third rebound to go with seven points. Inside, Washington threw it right into the hands of awaiting Amelagu. You know, once you get it in that spot, Take your time. Three seconds is a long time. And to be honest, very seldom do officials call three seconds. Take your time, pivot, and find out who's open. Either you're going to be wide open or someone else will be wide open. Most of the time when you get in the middle of that zone. Chagua against Cumberland. Washington the double. Good feed, Douglas. And Clark flies in for the rebound. Six rebounds for Clark. Broom pushes the pace and scores. He might be Cincinnati's microwave, Kane Broom. Well, that's what they brought him in to do. I mean, he, he is a, a prolific scorer. And they want him, he's had some adjustments to make because you know, he's used to the Sacred Heart transfer of Broom we're talking about here. The Sacred Heart just come in and shoot anytime he wanted. Here they want him to score, but then also incorporate his teammates a little more than he did in his previous stop. Chagua, three to shoot. It has to be Witt, a three. Not his game. Slapped out of bounds and called off of Cincinnati, though Chagua went over the top. Never mind. It is Cincinnati ball. See right here. Chagua smacked it. It's hard to tell. He might have hit it off of Washington, but the officials, Cincinnati ball. Rick he definitely had smacked ball. it, though. Yeah, if it's close, you figure you're generally going to call it off the guy who made that smacking motion. Exactly. Cumberland, a break right into the hands of Jennifer. Jennifer had Landrum fall down. Broom slashing through high off the window. At, at this rate, Cincinnati's going to have close to 20 rebounds, 20 offensive rebounds for the game. Eight in a row for the Bearcats. They've grabbed eight offensive rebounds in the first half. Chagua trying to get something going, and that's a terrific move to get Clark in the air. Okay, young fella, turn around. Now here's Broom, and then the transition defense was not the best. Non was non existent. Not the best. Nice move down at the other end by Chagua. Took his time up and under, and then kind of had no idea where the ball was coming down the court. Chagua with his first. Nice spin and twirl. Oop. Let me give you that. Come back. Nice move by the freshman on the senior. But look, he's not, he has no idea where the ball is as he turns to run down the court. In the meantime, Broom is going in for a layup. Shagwa didn't realize until the very end. These two teams both play at extremely slow tempos. They're among the 30 slowest in the nation. Broom is the one player who might not fit into that pace, the way he can push and attack. And SMU, with the seven players, it, there might be some moments where the Mustangs just let up a little bit going down the floor. You can't do that against Broom, who is such an attacking presence. No, but there's, there's a few things need to be said when people start talking about pace. Cincinnati's pace is perceived to be slow because of this end of the court, because Great point. of their defense. Most teams take a long, most teams are scoring on them or shooting on them under seven seconds. All right, so the teams aren't flying up there, so that, that makes the pace of play slower, as we see right here. 
you have Shagwa taking a contested three with two seconds on the shot clock. That's, that's because of Cincinnati's defense. Kane Broom left it short. Namelagu rests home the rebound. And as you said, SMU, because of their bodies, you know, I think they are intentionally slowing the game down, trying to shorten the possessions. That's, that's the best way for this team, this SMU team, this year to win games. But Melagu, Cincinnati's getting up and down. Sorry, Dana Melagu will get to the line on this foul, a block against Brooks. Looked like the right foot was inside. Yeah, he was inside the circle, area. yep. This will be the first free throw attempted by SMU today. We have Douglas back in for Witt. Douglas looks like he's grown this season. He's stretching out a little bit, just a freshman. He's going to be a terrific player down there. He's a 6'5 string bean. You ever have that, somebody that you coach that all of a sudden gained an inch or two from yeah. year to year? Or was it somebody Great. that you just list as gaining an inch? No, I like to go the other way. List, list them smaller than they are. Then when the opposition gets out there, like, ooh, this guy's not 6'2", he's 6'4". You, you just said Greg. Were you going to say Monroe? No, Greg Whittington. Greg Whittington, okay. He, he grew well with us. Elijah Landrum with those neon shoes, and we'll get a violation against SMU with Shagwa trying to work inside. Shagwa picks up his second foul. Shagwa, Witt, and Agal all with two fouls for the shorthanded Mustangs. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Investments, retirement, insurance. Chris, thank you. We look forward to that. Tight game here with the Cincinnati ahead by three in a first half that has seen the Bearcats shoot just 39% but grab eight offensive rebounds. Mick Cronin and company in search of a 28th win in 32 tries. It was so impressive what they were able to do Sunday. Go into Wichita State. In a place where almost nobody wins and claim the outright league championship 62-61. The non-conference losses to Xavier in Florida. Had that two-game blip with the loss at Houston and the loss to Wichita, but a strong finish to the year. Nice home win over Tulsa, who Cincinnati could play in the semifinals. And then to go in Wichita State. A lot's left in the bracket here, so we're not going to make any predictions or root for anybody in particular. If we got Cincinnati Wichita round three, I don't think anyone would complain considering how good those first two games were. Well, I think the Houston Cougars would complain. <laughs> other, uh, other than that, I don't right, think anyone point. else would. McMurray with an air ball. That Houston team is in action tonight, and Houston split its season series with both Wichita State and Cincinnati. Washington floats it home. And remember, the Cincinnati team has played almost the entire first half without Jacob Evans, who picked up two early fouls. A timeout called by Tim Jankovic. We're back in 30 seconds to Orlando. What a year it's been for the American Conference. The big off-season headline was Wichita State ending its seven-decade tenure in the Missouri Valley. SMU and UConn expected to help challenge them, but the Mustangs and Huskies struggled for various reasons. Cincinnati went into Wichita, 16-2 in conference play, a one-point winner over the Shockers to claim the outright title and the number one seed here in the conference tournament. Our own Joel Denardi has Cincinnati right now on the two-line as the final number two seed. Elijah Landrum stuffed by the rim on a dunk attempt. And that last time out, Coach Jankovic was about to lose his mind over there. Really lit into his guys. Just put the ball in the basket, Landrum. Clark falls and travels. What do you think Tim Jankovic was so frustrated about in that timeout? The easy looks that, 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 that Cincinnati's starting to get. 
the adjustments. The guys have made the tweaks and the adjustments within that zone. And then also the second shots. Should be went out of the pressure to a Melagoo. Shagwell playing with two fouls because both he and Agao have two. Douglas on the step in. Douglas smothered by Washington. Kyle Washington, the American leader in blocks in conference games. Fourth overall at nearly one and a half. Williams a throw away and then more bops Landrum. Nice skip pass. Show shot by Douglas. Goes in there. Mr. Washington is just waiting for him. You got to go strong on it. None of that dipsy doodle stuff. Just go strong to the rim. Maybe you draw a foul. Nice block by Washington. As you said, leads the conference in blocks. See the number in conference play. Washington has had at least one block shot in every conference game except for the Tulsa game. SMU three out of its last 14 since that red hot start. Hit six of eight to begin the game. And the Mustangs have fallen prey to this outstanding Cincinnati defense. Amelagu with a scoop, hit but not fouled. Here's Jaron Cumberland. No, we saw that yesterday a few times. Amelagu was playing to get fouled instead of trying to make the layup. He was anticipating the referee calling the foul instead of just going in there strong and making the layup. And he's still talking to the ref about it. Well, this feels like a key 65 seconds because Cincinnati will have Evans on the floor to start the second half. Jacob Evans has played just four minutes in this first half. Amelagu had a great game against UConn yesterday. Hit his first two shots, but only a couple of free throws sets. No, but it was, it was hopefully for the SMU, it was a similar pattern yesterday. It was in the second half when Amelagu got going yesterday. Shagwa flips it home. Okay. Big defensive possession right here. Let's see if they can find Clark right in the middle of that. There we go. Cumberland up to Clark. He missed it. Shagwa with the rebound. SMU can hold for the last. Now I like that kind of aggression from Shagwa. We've seen him be aggressive at the offensive end, attacking the basket. I like him attacking that rebound right there. Malagu guarded by Clark. The step back and the score. Ben Amelagu pulls SMU within one at the break. Amelagu winding the clock down, giving him a little couple of moves. I'm telling you, a few years from now, 15, 20 years from now in the under 30 league, an under 40 league, he's going to be killing them. Ben Amelagu, the red shirt senior in SMU, down just one. Cincinnati has missed a whole lot of easy looks in this first half. And the top seeded Bearcats just a one point lead in the first quarter final game here, the American. Now for Chris Cotter, Lafonso Ellis, and Tom Green, let's go to the Audi halftime report. Watching ESPN's Champ Week presented by Principal. This is the 2018 Aaron's American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship. Uh, slow mo cameras were made for Mick Cronin and Akoya Gow. Tim Jankovich and the Mustangs hanging in there. Down just one to top seeded Cincinnati at the break in the American quarterfinals. Kevin Brown and John Tops, the third back with you. No Jacob Evans for most of that first half. SMU was plus three with Evans on the bench, and it was a little bit of a gritty half, but here's SMU right back in this thing after a first round win yesterday. Right in it, and a large part of Coach Cronin's facial expressions, as we saw a few seconds ago, is because of the SMU zone and what Cincinnati is getting or is not getting out of that zone. And so you see a couple of replays here where they're, they're giving, SMU's giving them the, the ball right there. They're giving them that shot, and they're basically saying, 
whoever you put right there is not going to make enough shots or not going to make the right passes to beat us. And so that's the gamble that SMU is taking. It's one of, a lot of people play that zone that way. And a lot of times that defensive turnover, that offensive poor shot selection leads to a run out in the score. And then you see the young man like right there. He's wearing, he said he's wearing that sweatshirt in honor of, of Coach Huggy, Coach Huggins, Bob Huggins. You know, Mick, Mick's dressing has, has picked up a lot, a lot lately. He's dressing pretty smoothly. You know? I like the watch. First half stats brought to you by Aaron Cincinnati. Has done most of its damage in the paint. Has not hit a three-pointer in the first half and has dominated off turnovers. Here's a chance for another. A Gao strip. Jared Cumberland up with it. And again, it's Evans who played just four minutes in the first half, and he looks like it on that three. McMurray elevating over Jennifer. SMU has the lead to start the second. Jamal McMurray with six in the first half. SMU led by Amelagu with nine. Kyle Washington, nine to lead Cincinnati. Gary Clark with five and seven rebounds. And a violation against Cincinnati. I believe we have a three-second call. Cincinnati with its fifth turnover of the game. Mustangs in that first half shot 11 for 25, 44%. They turned it over five times. SMU 80 to 73 over Connecticut yesterday to set up this third meeting between the teams this year. First two were big Bearcat wins. Today a different script so far. Jimmy Witt on the scoreboard for the first time. Washington sealing off a Gao. Flips it up with a left, and Kyle Washington is in double figures. You know, that, that's one of those situations where Kyle usually goes over the other shoulder. He usually goes over his right shoulder. But when, even when he goes over his left, he's going to bring it back to his left hand. Melagu. McMurray adjusted in the air, four to shoot for SMU. And Amelagu just hit Cumberland. But we've got a three second violation on the other end. That one against Akoya Gao. Right when I say very seldom do you get three second calls, we're in a game where they call three seconds. <laughs> two in the opening two minutes and a half. Almost looked like Don Daly didn't want to make the call by the expression on his face, but he had no choice with the gal camped out. Now Clark into a gal. Clark squeezes it in off the front of the rim. <laughs> Gary Clark, the conference player of the year, the defensive player of the year for Cincinnati. His Bearcats back in front. A seesaw start to the second. It's a Gao. For three, his second of the game. <laughs> Koya Gao. He said he, he took off the bulky knee brace, put on the headband. He's playing. Like a, like a young man. He said yesterday he, he wanted to shave about 10 years off. Evans falls at a three-point try. Landrum there for the rebound. Amelagu, instead of lining up a deep three, will swing it back out. McMurray. Side iron. And quietly out of bounds to Cincinnati. Akoya Gow lines it up straight on. Sometimes it goes in. I mean, go, I right go, go figure that Akoya Gow individually 
has hit two more threes than the entire Cincinnati team. Bearcats are 0 for 9. Jennifer in the lane. And a rebound to a gal. And that's what's important right there for them to, for SMU to get those rebounds. Limit Cincinnati to one shot. Mustangs, the champion to the American tourney. The last two times they've been in it. A Melagu knifing through. And that's uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic of a Cincinnati team. He just sized that up, dribbled for about five or six seconds, and then got all the way to the rim. Normally their help side defense is much better than that. Largest SMU lead and a chance to extend. Jimmy Witt, Landrum off the bounce. Seven in a row for the Mustangs. Ponies came ready to play out of, the, out of, out of the locker room. They all look like they can use that timeout, though. They're huffing. Tina was 15 and 7. BPI gave him a 78% chance to make the tournament at that juncture. Injuries derailed the season. Lost eight of their final nine. But it's tournament time. And SMU has turned on the Jets in the first three halves plus five minutes of this one. It's tournament time, and as you said at the open, they haven't lost in this tournament yet. A gal again. Oh, ho, 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 ho. You might have left if that thing fell. Hey, man, I was going to take him with me to get a lottery <laughs> ticket, but the game was over if that one is. Washington, finally. I mean, Cincinnati keeps getting, you have to be happy with these looks, right? If you're Cincinnati, they keep getting these shots in the middle of that zone. Finally, someone converts. Well, as I said, tactically, that's the shot SMU, is, that's the gamble they're playing. We're going to give you that shot, but we don't think you're going to make enough of them to beat us. Double team comes, the Gow's pass out of the hands of Witt to McMurray. I actually think he was trying to throw it to McMurray, Witt was cutting. McMurray's got a hoist, or not. That's a shot clock violation. SMU gaining a little momentum here. Jimmy Witt in transition. Dropping off a nice little dime to Landrum right there. They're getting it done at both ends of the court right now. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Investments, retirement, insurance, and PlayStation 4. Greatness awaits. Four-point lead for SMU. Nearly six gone by here in the second half. Take a look at our Aaron's American Athletic Conference Championship bracket. Tulsa and Memphis to follow on ESPN2. Then Wichita State and Houston in action tonight on ESPNU. Fantastic year for the conference. Three teams that are very dangerous going into the tournament. And we're welcoming in Mike Oresco right now, who's the man in charge of this whole Thank American you, Enterprise. Commissioner, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Day one of the books, day two off to a good start. Uh, what are your impressions overall of what steps the conference took this year? I think the conference has made uh, tremendous strides. Uh, bringing in Wichita State, was, I, I can't overstate how important that was to the conference. I think it elevated play all around. But the conference was getting better, and you could see that. And the fact that Wichita had a challenging schedule and lost a few games in the conference certainly showed the strength. Uh, also, we're developing more strength t uh, toward the lower tier of our league also. You're starting to see we had nine or ten teams now that were uh, 100 or, or far lower in the RPI, and that's really important. I think there's balance you can see today with, with SMU and, and Cincinnati, the balance in this league. I think we could have easily had five tournament teams had it not been for the injuries to SMU and to uh, uh, UCF. No, and that's what I was just going to say, Commissioner. You know, people, the next couple of weeks, if they haven't already, will be familiar with Cincinnati, Wichita State, and Houston. But going into the year, UCF and this SMU team should be contending for uh, fighting for seeding as opposed to not being able to get bids as the injuries completely decimated them. Now I think this conference is in a very, very good position as we go forward to be among the elite conferences in basketball. You know, Coach, that was our goal. You know, we had the national championship in 2014, and we slipped a bit. Uh, we, we've been good. We've had good teams. SMU's had a great run over the last four years. 
but we haven't been as good as we wanted to be. And I think now, I think there's depth in the conference. Uh, there's a renewed commitment to basketball. You know, it, it's one of our major sports. We want to be good. If this P6 narrative is to have any meaning, we have to be really good in basketball as, as well as football. And I like the, the look of the league. I like the coaches. You know, when you have coaches like we have, you're bound to have good teams eventually. And I think we're only a year or two away from what you said being really one of the elite conferences. I think we're one of the better conferences now. I think we're realistic. You know, we know that, uh, you know, we, we'd like to be a five or six or seven bid league down the road uh, you know, when you have 12 teams. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but uh, we're getting closer. No, I absolutely think that you're getting closer. And another key point, you also touched on the, the level of coaching in this league. I mean, you have Hall of Fame coaches. You have so many different coaches that have been to a Final Four already that the level of teaching that the players are getting when they get to the campuses is, is elite. Yes, and, and uh, Greg Marshall talked about when they when they got here, the, the, the athlete that, that you play against in this league, the, the level of coaching. You know, you've got veterans, and that's the one thing we can do in basketball, Coach, that we couldn't necessarily do in football. Uh, and we have great football coaches, but here the pedigree is incredible. You know, we've got coaches that have won national championships, that have been to Final Fours, that have been to, you know, the tournament year in and year out. And you're right, when you get those kinds of coaches and you can train, your, your, you know, and coach your players, uh, off, and there's no question it makes a huge difference. Take a look at some of the Final Four yeah. coaches here. Kelvin Sampson was the coach of the year. Tubby Smith, of course, a national championship with Kentucky, now Memphis. And Greg Marshall, that recent addition of Wichita State. Kevin Ali, who took down the Nets a few years ago for UConn. It, what, it, what, is that the identity of this league right now, a, a league that it's only five years in, so I know you haven't had time to grow an identity fully yet, but good coaching, is that where it starts in terms yeah, of men's basketball? Yeah, it, it definitely does. Uh, it, it, coaching makes so much difference. You know, if you get a great coach, that program is likely to be good. But more than that, we've devoted the resources now to, to uh, college basketball in a way that I think will ensure success. Um, you know, we have new arenas going up in various places, and uh, we're, we're making the commitment. There's the Sear Brooks with a finish, and Cincinnati has scored six in a row. The Bearcats have their lead, and the pressure is on here against SMU. And just real quickly, he wasn't on that list, but you have to mention Coach Dunleavy down at Tulane, who hasn't been to a Final Four yet, but has been to the pinnacle in the NBA. Yeah, he's done a remarkable job. You know, he, he easily, and, and Frank Hay, you know, yep. could, they could easily have been coach of the year in the sense of what they did with their teams. You know, Tulane has not been an easy place, you know, uh, to win at. But on the other hand, uh, Coach Dunleavy is a great teacher. He's recruiting. Uh, we think that, again, teams that have not had that basketball success in the past are going to be good in this league. And I think it's in part because of the commitment of the administrators wanting to hire good coaches. And you see it at SMU. Look at the program. Uh, now they fill that arena every night. And, and you know, President Bush, uh, you know, 43, really enjoys going to the games. I think he said it was his favorite sporting event I think, recently uh, to go to. So uh, I think it's uh, it's terrific that, uh, that we've got the commitment. And when you have that commitment, if we lose a coach from time to time, and we really haven't in basketball, basketball for the most part, will replace them with a good one. And, and I think it all begins and ends with commitment. Mike Oresco, Commissioner of the American, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. I can't believe they make you wear a credential here, but they do. <laughs> He's the commissioner. You should go wherever you want. Good luck to you the rest of this weekend. Thank you. I really Thank you, appreciate sir. being with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Eight zero run for the Cincinnati Bearcats. They have dominated the offensive glass. They're back in front over SMU. This is the first of our day session doubleheader on ESPN2. Memphis Tulsa to follow the winner of this game, the winner of that game, leading the semis tomorrow. So one point game of the half. Mustang scored seven in a row. Cincinnati's answered with eight. The top seeded Bearcats ahead. Ben Amelagu with a misfire from three, and Kane Broom jets across for Cincinnati. And that elite Cincinnati defense allows them to go on those runs. They can just shut people down for long stretches. Bearcats have still not hit a three, but they get another two. Trayvon Scott with seven points off the bench. McCronin said, our development of our team is our focus this weekend, pointing specifically to the bench as the reason they won that Wichita State game and a reason why they pulled away from Tulane. Scott, Broom, and Brooks 
have provided a lift off the Cincinnati bench today. That three no from McMurray. Rebound Jacob Evans. And Elagoo gets in there to tie him up. Possession arrow favors SMU. Nice tough play by Melagu right there. He just stuck his nose in there and grabbed the ball. Wasn't slapping. Put his whole body in there. Now SMU's falling in love with the jump shot. They have to see if they can get some penetration. Landrum bump by Broom. We've got a foul against Kane Broom. His first. Cincinnati foul number 15, Kane Broom. First personal foul, second team foul. Is there someone you're looking to go to if you're SMU or simply that dribble drive offense and yeah, find they, the option? I think at this point it, it's it's find the option. I mean, Landrum can get in there, McMurray can get in there, Melagu can get in there. They have multiple people that can create that action. They've just been a little stagnant passing it around the perimeter and selling for long jump shots right now. McMurray went to take off the long sleeves of the first half. He rocks those long white tights. Matched up with Brooks. Landrum. Good rotations for Cincinnati. It's Brooks all over McMurray, who puts in a three. <laughs> they ended up, they still ended up with the three. There's two, long two right there. But that was good movement. They changed sides of the court, had multiple people touch the ball. McMurray gets a shot in rhythm. That will be reviewed and looked at at the next stoppage. It is a two as it stands. Brooks, a gal there to knock it away. Broom Johnny on the spot. Five to shoot for Cumberland. Broom side to side. And Cincinnati still 0-4 from three. Landrum on the drive. A gal. Scott reaches in, and we have a travel before the shot. Tenth SMU turnover. And, and look for SMU. I think they're just going to spread. Five out. Spread and try to take their guys one-on-one. -on -one. Get into that little weave action a little bit. See if they can get to the rim. Brooks and Scott to the bench for a nice ovation for Cincinnati. Washington and Clark, the starting bigs, are back in there. Broom, the only reserve in with the starters. Washington muscles it too strong. Broom is in there fighting for the offensive rebound. That's the six foot, 160 pound junior. Yeah, but you know what? On this squad, it's attitude. And their attitude is we're going to go get it. How tall and how much you weigh doesn't matter. If you go to Cincinnati, you better rebound. McMurray. Yes. They're just going to spread it out. See if and see if Cincinnati can guard us one on one or get the help rotating over. What SMU has to do is see if they can start to string together. Once again, string together stops at this end of the court. These are two of the top 11 scoring defenses in the nation. Clark knocked away. Amelagu. Here's McMurray, the Jetpack Junior. Missed it. Got it back. And missed it again. Cumberland, a transition try, oh. barreled over Witt. He didn't have the ball. It's a Melagu. Might be a time for somebody to take a breath right about now. Great hustle by McMurray on the previous play, though. Missed the shot, hustled back, came up with the steal. Like you said, both teams need to relax and breathe a little bit to see if we can execute. Washington. Put someone right there that can make that shot. It's open. Kyle Washington, a game high 15. 20th game in double figures this year. He's played well over the last few Washington as part of an up and down year. It's been mostly up. A gal with four to shoot. 
Atop the rim, Clark tips it to Evans. McGowan needs a breather. He's a little tired right now. You're a Cincinnati fan, you've been waiting all afternoon for the Bearcats to extend this thing. Back and forth we've gone. Cumberland. Boy, that was way off the mark after he got around his defenders. And a foul will send us to break. The winner of this game goes to the semis where they get the winner of that game. Memphis, the five seed, coming off a win over USF. And the fourth seed at Golden Hurricane of Tulsa. That will follow us on ESPN2. Thank you, that great Alabama finish yesterday with a win over Texas a and They might need to win one more, though. And you'll get reaction from that Bama game and all the, all the rest of the bubble teams on Sports Center with Michael Smith at 6 Eastern. The bubble, who's locked in, who's locked out? Plus, which LA celebrities LeBron James puts on a show for. We'll be taking our private jet out after this. Reaction and analysis from Tigers' second round at the Valspar Championship, 6 Eastern, on ESPN. And the ESPN app, it is Sports Center. We're taking the private jet We're out after this? We're taking the jet, yeah. Okay, okay. LeBron put on a show for us. You and I only have the first half of the game, so we'll turn it over to Mike Corey and Mark Adams for the nightcap. Although, in all sincerity, I can't wait to watch those games tonight. See Wichita State, Temple, third game. The first two were terrific. And then UCF and Houston. Some dangerous teams for those top seeds in this bracket. Two really good games tonight. Those will be both on ESPNU, 7 and 9 Eastern. Off the inbound, Kyle Washington missed the bunny. Cincinnati has missed so many shots near the rim in the lane in this game. Part of that tactical by SMU to give it to him. A cow, great vision to find Douglas. McMurray was all alone, and he makes Cincinnati pay. Well, you know, right there, a gal, the previous two times that he's touched the ball, he's been trying to score. And we said earlier in the first half, his strength is not scoring down on that block. He's being a facilitator. Right there, he made a great skip pass. They made the extra pass. McMurray gets the open shot. It's the first three McMurray's made in the game. Jacob Evans is finally on the scoreboard, meanwhile, for Cincinnati. All-conference first-teamer with his first points. Murray has scored the last seven for SMU. This is a gal going to work on Cumberland. Amelagu has Clark draped all over him. The league's defensive player of the year with some outstanding man-to-man -man defense there. Yes, it was. Absolutely. Nothing was there at all. And, and behind Clark, if they were happy to get past Clark, he had help. Great defense. Moving his feet. Cuts him off again. Help from my teammate right there. That's Cincinnati basketball, baby. Gary Clark led the league in rebounds. Seventh in the American in steals. Tied for fifth in blocks. Leading this Cincinnati defense second best in Division One. A very worthy, worthy winner of that Defensive Player of the Year award. Broom has the first Cincinnati three of the afternoon. And that was a very unselfish play by Cumberland, who slid in there and set a great screen for Broom against the zone. Matches the largest lead for Cincinnati. McMurray left it on the deck. Will this be the stretch out moment for the Bearcats? Evans can't connect. We know this SMU team is going to stay in attack mode. Gao will save it. Now don't get stagnant here. Get a little bit of movement. It's McMurray at two. Yes. Or just give it to the microwave. They're setting that on-ball screen. They want a gal to set an on-ball screen because Cincinnati's switching all those. And they're trying to create the switch. The previous three times after the switch, they threw it into a gal. 
That time McMurray said, let me, let me take it. And he's got nine in a row in terms of SMU scoring. Broom fouled, and he'll get three free throws. McMurray with the foul. Sometimes it's not about tactics. It's just give it to your guy that can score and let the microwave heat up. Well, the soup just exploded because McMurray fouled Broom on a three. That, that wasn't close to being humorous. That was not close to being humorous. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate <laughs> that you tell it like it is. Thanks. You have to get your digs in while you can, you know. We only have one more of these. Exactly. Crunch time right here. We got 416. Cincinnati's trying to inch away. But as you noted earlier, every time they try to inch away, SMU comes up with a big basket. Well, they have their largest lead now after Broom hits all three. Kane Broom with 13 off the bench continues his hot streak. Double figures in five of the last six for the transfer from Sacred Heart. Now probing, taking himself, and Cumberland is there over the top. They don't run that play for him to try to shoot. Every time he's tried to shoot down there, I believe he's either traveled or had that result. He's done great when passing out of that position. Cumberland. Clark for three. Gary Clark, the player of the year, delivers. The player of the year. The defensive player of the year. The sportsman of the year. Bangs a three. 11 to two run for the top seed. McMurray left it short. Clark wrestles it away. Evans is fouled. And who else other than Gary Clark coming up with that rebound? He'll go quiet for a time, but he'll step up when needed. There's the guy. Mr. Clark does it all for the Bearcats. Coach Cronin saying, get back on defense. Let's now go do what we ESPN do. The ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Aaron. Least to own top brands in furniture, electronics, and appliances with no credit needed. The personification of rivalry. It's ridiculous how good this is. UNC and Duke. The saga continues. Nine Eastern tonight, winner to the ACC title in Brooklyn. And that leads us into tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch. A couple of guys averaging a double-double on the season. Luke May and the Heels took the first meeting, but Marvin Bagley was big last week as Duke won game two. Big last week, he was big last night also. I mean, the poise that this young man has to be a freshman, and we're fortunate to witness a year where there have been many stellar freshmen that as soon as you're ready to say, well, this one's the best, someone else steps up. I mean, it's, it's a great freshman class, and Bagley clearly is, is at the top of that. One of the ones at the top yep. of that, I should say. SMU has its largest lead. And the question for SMU is, how much gas do the Mustangs have in the tank? Seven scholarship players, no Shake Milton, no Jure Foster, no Everett Ray. They hung 80 on UConn yesterday. They nearly got dunked on by Washington. Amelagu. Oh, Clark out of nowhere. Gary Clark, absolutely not. <laughs> Young man. Young man. I think he's got an S on his chest. Great effort. Heart and soul of this team. Heart and soul of this program. We're going to put the pressure on them if they hold on to this win. We're going to put the pressure on them to, to really represent this, this conference in the postseason in the tournament. Tech on Coach Jankovic right there. He was quietly whispering something in the official's ear. <laughs> 
Tim Jankovic with the tech. Justin Jennifer will shoot the free throw. It's funny, if, if you just go by expressiveness, you wouldn't think that of the two coaches in the game, it would be Jankovic. Mick Cronin so outwardly intense. Jankovic seems a lot more measured, but clearly he rankled the men in stripes there with something he said. No, you know, you bring up an interesting point. That happens a lot. Now, I don't know what just happened right there. I don't know what, what, what Coach Jankovic said. But a lot of time, if you have someone, let's say with mixed personalities, how I'll put it, and someone that's a lot calmer, when the, calm, the, the, the crazy guy can say a, a million different things, when the calm guy says something, the ref gets mad at him. Happens all the time. Yeah. Not to in any way, shape, or form imply that it's crazy. No, you would never do that. No. Nah. Coach of the year. Name is Sporting News Coach of the Year yesterday. But Foul against Gary Clark. But he's done a great job. I'm, I, I say a lot of things about Mick and Jess. Outstanding coach. Animated. Like Huggy also. Jimmy Witt, quiet game for him. He scores. Cut the lead back to 10. SMU will put some pressure on. Clark didn't even take a triple there. That was handled well by Cincinnati's player of the year. No, and, and let's say from a tactical standpoint, pivoting is underrated. He just caught it right there and pivoted, protected the ball until he found an open man. Knocked out of Clark's hands on the way up. His fifth turnover, and then McMurray sprays it back. A little, a little hurdle over a Melagoo, and Cincinnati's going to take the air out of this ball. Jennifer. Cumberland bump. McMurray has it. Under two to play, down ten. McMurray way off the mark, but Shagwa there to clean it up. Jennifer got hit in the face, no call. Now we have a call. It's not over. This SMU team, look at three, four guys bending over, hands on their knees. They're exhausted right now, but there's no, there's no quit in this group. They've had such adversity this year with the, with the injuries, with being shorthanded, but the group that has been on the court has consistently fought. I mean, look at McMurray, who's played 37 minutes yesterday. He's played well, well over 30 minutes since Shake Milton went down, closer to 40 again. Amelagu. And you talk about the minutes he's played. It, it, it's exhausting to get up the number of shots that he gets up and how he gets them up. That wears on you also. This is with Milton out. 14 and a half shots per game, 38 plus minutes for McMurray. And you could construct a graphic like that in terms of the increased role for all seven of these Mustangs that are healthy scholarship players left. That includes Amelagu, the senior, Agao, the graduate transfer. It looks like this is the last rodeo for this group. They played so hard in a season that was just derailed. I mean, let's face it, SMU with Milton and with Foster, wasn't a guarantee they'd be in the tournament, but they're not a nine seed in this conference. They had almost an 80% chance to make it even after Foster went down, according to BPI. And these kids have played about as hard as you could expect, and maybe even harder. Exactly, they're still giving it their all. Bright side is you have some young guys, they got a lot of experience this year that they didn't anticipate. Here they go. This is the third or fourth offensive rebound in one possession. McMurray down to the bitter end. Uh, who else but Clark to clean it up? Gary Clark is fouled, and he'll shoot a one and one. <laughs> Until finally Clark says enough is enough. They know that last possession right there. Let me just tell you something that I know for a fact. That last possession right there, Cincinnati's going to watch, and they're going to hear about it from their coach, Mick Cronin, when you have, I think that was four offensive rebounds in one possession that SMU just got. Look at Coach, can we get Coach Cronin over there? He's mad at the world. Well, on the other bench is a different emotion. Ben Amelagoo's just checked out for SMU. This is the final game for Amelagoo 
as an SMU Mustang. We had him on senior day. It was an emotional night last week, and it is an emotional afternoon here because of everything that young man has fought through. Major injuries, transferred from Virginia Tech. Tim Jankovic said after yesterday's game that Amelagu has been playing for five weeks without his strength. And I'll quote, it's like I'm having my next door neighbor play, not Ben Amelagu. Because of the right wrist tendonitis, he's had to fight through. And credit to that young man for an outstanding career. He gave his all. We said, we said that on senior night when we were down there. He gave his all for his teammates, for his school. Double-double for Clark. Shagwa to follow, and SMU will take a timeout. Bearcats are 29.3 seconds away from a date with either Tulsa or Memphis. You know that feeling that you only get this time of year? Sexton, he got it! Welcome back. I get goosebumps just watching some of those highlights. Javon Carter in West Virginia in the Phillips Big 12 Championship bracket with a juicy meeting with Texas Tech tonight. Kansas and Kansas State before that on ESPN. Top four teams are alive in Kansas City. Maybe the wildest conference this year, the Big 12, which might get eight teams, might get seven, might get nine into the dance. ESPN and ESPN2 for those ones tonight. SMU keeps the pressure on, broken by Cincinnati's Keith Williams. He is fouled. Takeaways if you're a Cincinnati fan from this game? You know, I, I think they were extremely systematic, extremely methodical, precise with how they approached the game and how they played the game. I think that you know, clearly, as I said, mainly in the first half, you know, the zone slowed them down a little bit and it took them a while to figure that out. But at the end of the day, they defend. At the end of the day, they rebound. At the end of the day, like all the mixed teams, you're going to have a toughness to them that you're going to have to overcome if you're going to even think about beating the Cincinnati team this weekend or in the weekends to come. And at the end of the day, they win. 28 times this year they've done that. Cincinnati to the American semis. 61-51, a gutty effort by a shorthanded SMU team. Ball shorts. Here's a look at the Aaron's American Athletic Conference brackets. First spot in the semifinals belongs to Cincinnati. Coming up, it's Tulsa and Memphis, the four and the five on ESPN2. Final thoughts from you on the way this played out, a hard-fought win for the Bearcats? No, a hard-fought win for the Bearcats. And at the same time, you have an SMU team who as I think as you worded it, just ran out of gas. I mean, you seven players that for the latter part of the season to go back-to-back -back nights, especially back-to-back -back nights when you had some guys that get injured like Akoi did. As you said, Amelagu has been hurting for, for, for a month now. And so they literally just ran out of gas. 61-51 is your final score. Cincinnati ends SMU season and moves on to the semis. Coming up next, the Arids American Athletic Conference Championship continues with Memphis and Tulsa. For now, we'll send you to the studio. Bearcats win it by 10.